EMTALA, or Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act, is a law that came about in the mid to late 80s. And it states that no hospital can refuse to treat someone in the emergency department based on their ability to pay. There was a time, and I vaguely remember this happening a couple of times with calls, where we would try to take a patient to a hospital, and we would be met by a nurse typically at the doors, and they would say, hey, we know this one, or this one we know doesn't have insurance, or they would ask us even, does this one have insurance? And if they don't, why'd you bring them here? There's a county hospital you should take them to. So then we would transfer them to the other hospital. Um, <clears throat> we know that that's, that's probably not a good thing. Um, so uh, nationwide it was passed that if someone presents at the emergency department, meaning they come to the emergency department, the emergency department must treat them and stabilize them before transferring them to another facility. And we all agree that that's good, good patient care. Now it's also kind of given us a version of universal health care because if you go to the emergency department, they have to treat you regardless of your ability to pay. Now they'll send you a bill and you get to pay that later, but at least initially you don't have to pay to go to the emergency department. And a lot of people do take advantage of that. As far as us in EMS, it means that we should take the patient to whatever hospital they want to go to. If they don't have a facility that they want or one that they request, or they are unable to answer that, so maybe they're unresponsive or unconscious, um, then we should take them to the closest medical facility. And if we go past that medical facility, we should have a reason why we wanted to go to another one. Now in our area, we have some hospitals that are cardiac hospitals, and that would be where we take somebody that we think is having a cardiac problem if they couldn't answer. Um, but otherwise, we should take them to the closest facility. The other way we can run into issues with this or problems with this is when we're doing transfers from one hospital to another. So once somebody comes to an emergency department, um, they have to be treated and stabilized. It does not mean they have to be admitted upstairs, but they have to be treated and stabilized in the emergency department. So we make a call to transfer them to another facility. And if you're going to do that, you want to make sure that you talk to the nurse and get a full patient report, and then you decide whether you're um, your ambulance and your level of, of care, your scope of practice will allow you to manage that patient. And if you can't manage that patient, then we need to find another way. Most of the time we can usually manage the patient. You also want to make sure that there is a physician at the receiving hospital that has agreed to accept the patient and that there is a room for that patient at that hospital. So I usually make sure I see a doctor's name and a room number on the transfer paperwork. The other thing that needs to happen is you need to talk to the family and they have to sign saying that they agree to transfer from hospital A to hospital B and that there is some risk associated with that, but the benefits are better care, more specialized care, whatever it is, but they have to sign off on that paperwork. Now our ambulance service, the one I work for, has actually provided a form for our emergency department, so they go ahead and just grab that form anytime they have a transfer, they have it filled out, I can quickly look to see if all the blanks are filled in and I see the doctor's name that's received them, I see the room number, and I see that the patient has signed or the family member has signed, and then we're good to go. Just remember that we should take the patient to the closest hospital if they can't answer. If they can request one, then we take them where they want to go. And we can't bypass certain hospitals or not go to certain hospitals based on the patient's ability to pay. And then there are a couple of things we have to get taken care of before we transfer them from hospital A to hospital B to make sure that the patient has been fairly treated and stabilized at the hospital that they went to.